I'm Evelyn Risley, technology reporter for The Wall Street Journal, here today with Wences Casares. He is the CEO of Zappo, which is a Bitcoin wallet and Bitcoin vault. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me. So Wences, you have a very um, unique background. You came from Argentina, from sheep farms in Argentina, and somehow that inspired you to start this company, Zappo, which is this virtual currency, Bitcoin wallet and vault. So mm -hmm. can you tell us a little bit about how you got from point A to, to point B? You know, growing up um, in a sheep farm in Patagonia, I saw my family lose everything three times in one childhood. You know? Because of inflation. One deflation. time it was because of inflation, another time it was because of confiscation of, of, of bank accounts, and the last time it was because of an enormous devaluation. And you know, as, as a family, you remember that when it happens and takes a long time to recover. It, it, and, and we saw the whole country, all of our friends and family go through that. So the very first time I saw Bitcoin, it's like, wow, this is a solution to not only to, to my family and the people I know, but actually to more than 5 billion people around the world who don't have a solution for that today. W we built something that does all of what you would need to do for, for the average consumer. You know, like, like you said, we not, not only keep the, them safe in, in vaults, um, so physically safe in different continents uh, around the world, but also we made them insured. So, um, so if anything were to happen to your bitcoins, you're covered and, 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 and you're safe. So there's a lot of skeptics out mm -hmm. there, a lot of people who say that Bitcoin could be going to zero. What do you think is the value of this currency? I think the big value of Bitcoin is it's uh, the best form of a universal ledger we've ever seen. Mm -hmm. You know, until now, the best form of a universal ledger we've ever seen has been gold. But gold is not easy accessible to a lot of people around the world. It's not easy for them to, to, to buy it, to keep it. And today, with the proliferation of the internet, of, of, of mobile phones, when you add Bitcoin on top of that, it's probably the easiest way for someone in a, in a country where they cannot trust their currency or they cannot trust their banks to safe keep the fruits of their labor. And it's something they didn't have until recently. So what type of people do you see investing in Bitcoin? I think we see two very different phenomena going mm -hmm. on. In the developing world, it's average, average people who mm -hmm. just want to put a significant part of their savings into Bitcoin because they trust it more than the local currency or the local banks. In the developed world is more sophisticated investors who are mm. speculating with a very small percentage of what they have that this may be worth a lot in the future. And now you compare it a lot to gold, which in a way has been a standard for hundreds and hundreds of years. Um, but when people are kind of considering, should I get into Bitcoin, they look at the markets on a week to week basis and they see the volatility. Um, what do you think about the volatility? Is that a, a big risk factor for the adoption yeah. of this currency? Absolutely. I think Bitcoin um, for a while will remain just as volatile, incredibly volatile. How long is a while? Years. years. I think that for years and until it, it becomes broadly adopted, it's likely to be uh, as volatile as we've seen and maybe even more volatile. And that's why it, uh, it's only prudent to, uh, if, if you do invest in Bitcoin, to only invest a small amount that you can afford to lose because it will remain uh, incredibly volatile for a very long time. And even that volatility is still attractive, though, to people who may be in developing countries where there's a lot of inflation or deflation. So e even kind of pricing in or expecting that volatility, you still think that people will find it attractive over kind of a long-term horizon. Yeah, people already do find yeah. it attractive in those places because despite the volatility, the volatility is something that you may find in, in a day or in a week, mm -hmm. um, but so far, when you look m three, six months in, Bitcoin has been very steadily increasing in value. And that's a better proposition to, to, to most people in those countries than having to suffer the loss in the local currency or risk it in the local banks. When it comes to Bitcoin, a lot of governments have started to, to wrap their, their heads around it and try to figure out the ways to regulate or, or tax it. Um, so there's been moves by the Chinese government, by the US government, the IRS recently had a statement what is your reaction to that? Is, is that you know, a, a bad thing for the ecosystem, for the adoption of Bitcoin? Mm -hmm. are, you, are you worried how people will perceive those, those moves? I think it's only natural. You know, Bitcoin mm -hmm. is emerging and it's slowly maturing. And part of that uh, maturing process is being recognized by countries and regulated as something new, um, both in, in, in how we tax it and how we treat it. I think it's mostly a very positive thing. I think we're going to see ups and downs like with any other emerging technology. Uh, but I think Bitcoin is here to stay and it makes sense that, that it be taxed and treated like any other. So let's, let's make a boat call here. In 10 years, what do you think Bitcoin will be worth? One Bitcoin? Between half a million dollars and a million dollars. 